ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Black Ops 6 beta, which just went down a couple of hours ago. We basically have a 48 hour gap between weekend one and weekend two of the Black Ops 6 beta. Weekend two is going to be open for everybody. So if you want to play, make sure you download Call of Duty HQ as well as the beta on your platform of choice. And today, Treyarch gave us some information as to what we can expect during weekend two, where we see the level cap is going to be increased to 30. There's going to be weapon balance tuning, which is freaking needed. Spawn tuning also incredibly needed. We have increased weapon XP earn rate. We have audio improvements, bug fixes, and more. All of that coming in weekend two, along with a couple of new maps. So that'll be interesting. But for right now, for this video, I want to review and discuss the good and the bad of the Black Ops 6 beta based on what we had during the first weekend. Because honestly, overall, the consensus from the community seems to be pretty mixed. I mean, oftentimes in my videos, you'll see people just bashing the game, saying it's terrible. But if you look other places, you're also going to see a lot of people defending the game, discussing what they like about it and talking about the positives and we're going to be doing that here as well in fact i went to twitter and i posted a poll because i was curious to see like just in general what did people think of the black ops 6 beta and i say how would you rate the black ops 6 weekend one beta from one to ten and rounding here it looks like about 30 percent would rate it one through three about 30 percent would rate it seven through ten and then 40 percent would rate it somewhere between a four and a six so there's some people that say it's absolutely awful like 30 percent some people that say it's great about 30 percent and about 40 percent are like they're in the middle like I don't really know it's okay it's not crazy but it's not terrible like it's somewhere in between right so the community definitely seems to be mixed in regards to the Black Ops 6 beta and I think that's due to a number of reasons the first one the biggest thing about the beta for me was skill based matchmaking being so ridiculously rampant of course I just recently did a whole video on that so I'm not going to be discussing it at length here in this video but skill based matchmaking was cranked up to infinity with this beta whether or not that was intentionally put there by Treyarch or Activision or Microsoft or even maybe it's just because it was a closed beta people had to pre-order and you know what if you're pre-ordering a cod game and downloading a beta and then jumping in and playing the game at two o'clock in the morning you're probably a really hardcore cod fan the level of skill based matchmaking that we saw during the beta if you're an above average player was nothing short of insane it was downright unfun for most people you know if you're somebody that enjoys like playing league play 24 7 you probably love the beta because that's what pretty much every single match felt like when you're in the higher skill based matchmaking bracket every match feels the same it was not enjoyable from that perspective weapon balance connect activity and gunfights in general, however, were also very hit or miss for me throughout the beta as well, which was very, very frustrating because there's people defending it and then people trying to come at it from a statistical level almost, right? So the Jackal, right, was crazy good during weekend one. It's pretty much the only gun that you saw and it made the game feel like it had a ridiculously fast time to kill. Everybody's using this one gun. It was really hard to gauge weapon balance and also it just felt like the time to kill was incredibly fast. Then you had Exclusive Ace and a bunch of other people who were kind of like statistic people where they look at everything like on a spreadsheet and kind of judge the game that way, saying that the Jackal really wasn't that OP and this time to kill was only barely better than that of Cold War and like on average it's not that bad. The time to kill was not that bad, the Jackal was not that bad, the health regeneration was not that bad, it was kind of on par with the rest of the Call of Duty franchise and it's one of those things where you can't just look at a spreadsheet and describe how the game feels, you know what I mean? It's one of those things where you have to actually be in the game and play the game and kind of experience it as compared to looking at a stat sheet and I was watching Ace's live stream yesterday and finally it started to kick in for him. He was miserable man, he was straight up miserable playing the game and he was blaming desync comboed with skill based matchmaking but overall the Jackal was so ridiculously OP and the desync was so bad with the connectivity and the gunfight inconsistency that nothing felt good throughout the entirety of the beta for a lot of people now some people had a good time with the beta they weren't having those issues Ace even said for the first like 3-4 days he had no issues then on the final couple days he started to have a ton of issues I'm like well welcome to the other side this is what we've all been talking about this is why the game feels so bad and hopefully it's something that Treyarch can address because because packet burst is a rampant issue in this game. Not only the desync, which causes such inconsistency with gunfights, but packet burst remaining a massive problem all these years later is just inexcusable. Watch this clip right here. This was like going to be my final match of the Black Ops 6 beta. Thankfully, after I calmed down, I went back and played a few more games. But check this out right here.
having stuff like that happening in the COD franchise and having it happen consistently just feels so bad, man. And for me personally, and this may be an issue you guys are facing as well, definitely let me know in the comments, but PC optimization appears to be kind of all over the place. It's tricky to detail, though, because every PC is different. For me, my PC barely runs Black Ops 6, man. Like, I spent the last few days just changing settings, upping quality, downing quality, changing resolutions, doing everything I can to try to get the game to run decently. And this could be a me thing. It could be a hardware issue, as my PC is a bit out of date. But I had zero issues getting things to run well in Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2, going back to Cold War, going back to any of the recent COD games. I've never had issues within the Black Ops 6 beta comes out and suddenly I'm lowering my stuff to like very low and going from 1440p back to 1080p and I'm still not able to consistently get 100 FPS. It was freaking miserable, man. And I did see a lot of people reporting in my Twitch chat that their frame rates were cut going from Modern Warfare 3 into Black Ops 6 and sometimes they were cut in half according to some people. Like the game did not really feel optimized on the PC platform for a lot of people. Some people it felt fine. Other people it felt terrible. That's to be expected though when it comes to a beta. So when you look at all of that from that perspective, right? If you're playing on PC, you might be having difficulty getting your PC to actually run the game. But even once you have the game running, the server desync, the packet burst, the jackal being OP plus skill based matchmaking really made the game not feel good. Like even if you're looking at things from a statistical perspective, which I respect that. I mean, it is nice to know those things. But at the same time, there's difference between statistics like on a spreadsheet versus how things actually play out in practice. Like if you can look at stats and say, you know what, statistically, the jackal is not OP and then jump into the Black Ops 6 multiplayer and say the same thing, then you're freaking out of your mind, man. I don't know what to tell you at that point, you know? So overall, the core gameplay of Black Ops 6 did not feel very good because there were a lot of issues during weekend one of the beta. From there, though, we can discuss other aspects of the game, like the maps, for example, right? How were the maps during the beta? Overall, I'd say they were pretty average. They were pretty average to mid, you know what I mean? Which is not necessarily a bad thing. I think a big part of it is, again, we're dealing with the connectivity, we're dealing with packet burst, we're dealing with the OP Jackal, we're dealing with skill-based matchmaking. With all that happening, it's really hard to judge a map, but nothing really stuck out to me during the beta. It's only been a couple of days, obviously, but nothing really stuck out, which is not necessarily a terrible thing. And this may sound like I'm trying to defend Call of Duty, but we talked about this on my live stream. Think back to a game like Black Ops 4. If you enjoyed Black Ops 4, like I did, I would actually rank Black Ops 4 as a top three COD of all time. That's how much I enjoyed it. The game was kind of the same way. I would argue that of the original maps that came out with Black Ops 4, none of them were instant classics or absolute bangers. Like, think about that. Like, original maps that came out with Black Ops 4, which one of those would you rate as, like, the high rise of the game, the terminal of the game, the crash, the raid, the firing range, you know, the iconic maps that go down in history as some of the best maps of all time in the COD franchise? What map from Black Ops 4 would fit that category? Pretty much none, right? Like, Contraband was okay. Seaside was okay. There weren't too many terrible maps maps in Black Ops 4, they were all just average to good. None of them were great, you know, and kind of so far, Black Ops 6 feels that way. Of course, we only had four of these 6v6 maps available. There's going to be 12 of them total when the game comes out. Then we got to play two of the face-off maps, of which there are going to be four of those when the game fully comes out. So we'll have to wait and see what other maps are going to be coming. We're going to get two more of those in Weekend 2, but so far, the maps just feel kind of average to me personally, and I'd love to hear what you guys think down there in the comments. When it comes to the weapons here, it's really hard to say, honestly. I have my notes it's right here in front of me. I want to cover things like maps and weapons and gunsmith and credit class and all that. When it comes to the weapons, what do you really say? Literally one gun dominated the entire first week of the beta and weapons like the Amos and the XM4 and even the C9, they did feel good at times, but the connectivity was so hit or miss and it felt nearly impossible to get a proper feel for the weapons with 10 out of every 12 people running the Jackal and diving around corners in all of your lobbies, you know? So the maps themselves didn't really feel like they were well equipped besides maybe Scud for assault rifle play. Play, but if they nerf down the submachine guns, which I fully anticipate they're going to do that because it happens every single COD beta, they always end up nerfing the SMGs. Once that happens, the rifles and the LMGs and the marksman rifles, they may be in a better spot. And so from there, we'll be able to see. But again, with the Jackal just running rampant, server desync and packet burst happening so much during weekend one, it's really hard to conclusively say how weapon balance is in this game. I just, I really can't tell you guys. When it comes to the gunsmith, however, freaking phenomenal. I was blown away. As 
just how good the gunsmith was here in this game. Now, I'm curious to see when the game comes out, like the full launch, exactly how many attachments we're going to have per weapon. But from what we saw during the beta this week, it was incredible, man. They simplified the entire process. Very rarely, if ever, are you ever going to have a downside to an attachment being on your gun, which just feels nice. You know, if you're looking at your gun and you're trying to make it perform better, you can just test things out very easily and just see how it's going to perform in game. Like, do you need more damage range on your gun or would you prefer more bullet velocity? There's no downside to either. Just pick one and see which one you like the most. You know, it's so fantastic. Gunsmith is incredible here in this game. I could not be happier with it. They finally streamlined and simplified that entire process. And I think that was an incredible move by Treyarch. It was ridiculously well done. When it comes to Cray class itself, I would say overall it's better to an extent, but it has potential to be really freaking bad. So the weapon loadouts are a cool idea. They didn't work all of the time. Did you guys notice that? Like if you made an entire AK class and then you tried to put that AK on a different class, sometimes it would carry over all of your attachments, but sometimes it wouldn't. So that kind of got confusing, but it was nice at times when it did work. So let's say you had a sniper rifle, for example, and you wanted to put your C9 as your secondary by using overkill. It would just automatically load up your C9 with all of its previously set attachments. And that felt pretty nice. It was nice to have that in the game. But when it comes to the rest of the create class, I mean, stim shots still feel completely mandatory, regardless of the fact that the health regeneration in the game by default is statistically average compared to the rest of the COD franchise. If you played weekend one of the beta, you know, you need stim shots. They feel absolutely mandatory in this game. And I think they knew that going into it, which is why they give us two of them as compared to one. But then we have the perks. The perks themselves feel really weird, right? You almost feel forced into running the enforcer combo, which takes gung ho, dexterity and double time along with either ghost or flak jacket. Pretty much every person in the beta this week ran this exact same setup. There are some interesting choices to be made with this new create class system. Like, for example, you can go with all the green perks to allow you to earn non-lethal score streaks faster and then combo that with bankroll, which starts you already every single life with 150 score towards your streaks. And then you get the green bonus, which is going to give you even more bonus score for playing the objective and destroying enemy equipment. Like, that's kind of fun. You can just start spamming UAVs and counter UAVs with a setup like that. But overall, it did really feel like you were pretty much required to run three red perks and then one extra one because of the health regeneration bonus and the movement speed bonus. If you're in a higher echelon of skill-based matchmaking, it just felt like you had to run that pretty much during the beta. And I'm interested to see what it's going to be like in weekend two, if more perks are going to be coming out, if more combinations are going to be coming out. And I'm also very interested to see how many perks and everything are going to be available in the full launch of the game and whether or not those combos are going to start appearing or if we already figured out the best possible combo already here during weekend one of the beta. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. When it comes to the UI, overall it's improved. Absolutely. It's a vertical UI as compared to the Hulu horizontal UI. There's still some elements of the old like COD HQ, almost Hulu-like UI, but it definitely is a lot better here in Black Ops 6 as compared to what we saw back during Modern Warfare 3 or Modern Warfare 2. And finally, the score streaks. They were too limited to tell, frankly. I mean, mostly we just had UAVs and then the chopper and very, very, very rarely somebody would get a health storm. Like, why is the health storm missile the highest streak in the game? Somebody make that make sense for me. Like, the health storm used to be one of the lowest streaks in the older CODs. Now it's like one of the highest. It's a health storm missile, man. It's not really that good. It's not really that crazy. I don't get it, man. It almost feels like, and I might be wrong about this. We'll have to wait until we see more streaks in the future, but it almost seems like they don't want streaks being in the game necessarily because they have a personal UAV, a regular UAV, and they count UAV and then they're like okay we can also put up a chopper which will not really get kills but it will ping enemy players for you and it's like are you just trying to make every person turn into the kill streak themselves or instead of having kill streaks that just do work for you and feel good like the old chopper gunners the old AC 130s the old pavelos and harriers instead of having those really fun rewarding streaks are you just basically making everything a UAV so that we can just continue to be sweaty and run around and kill each other on the map it's fun using kill streaks man make kill streaks a factor in COD that's what people used to love back in the day, but now the streaks I've said so many times are just harder to earn. They're way more easily countered and they're less lethal than they were before. So just running high streaks in COD anymore just doesn't really seem worth it. And so far, based on what we've seen during Black Ops 6, again, it still doesn't really seem worth it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you guys have it. There is the long and the short of my overall impressions of the Black Ops 6 beta during weekend one. The gameplay you guys are watching here today is not incredible by any stretch of the imagination, because I'll be honest, I rarely had decent matches when I was playing the beta this weekend, man. It was that crazy. Every single match felt the same. If I had a game where I went like 40 and 20, I felt like a god pretty much because every single opponent was just somebody that was trying out for FaZe Clan. It was freaking ridiculous. 
dude. But going into weekend two, hopefully connectivity does get sorted out. Hopefully the Jackal gets nerfed, which I anticipate it's going to, because just like every other beta, SMGs were just too good. Specifically the Jackal, but in general, SMGs were too good during the first part of this beta. If you look back and use older Call of Duty's as an indicator, Black Ops 3 had the same problem. Black Ops 4 had the same problem. Call of Duty World War 2 even had the exact same problem. Cold War had the same problem. Like if you go back and look at the old beta patch notes or watch the old beta videos, every single beta, the SMGs are OP because I think it's part of their balancing process essentially. But yeah, so nerfing the Jackal and then adding more maps, more streaks and more perks like that is going to make the game feel a little bit better. But ultimately, it's going to come down to will skill based matchmaking still be as rampant when it's an open beta compared to a closed beta? And will connectivity be better? Because without those things, we're still going to have the same issues we had during weekend one. But of course, time will tell, ladies and gentlemen, and I will be here with you guys every step of the way as we navigate through the remainder of the Black Ops 6 beta. But for right now, that's it for this video here today. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts and feedback on the Black Ops 6 beta down there in the comments. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.